Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder to our very long overdue video on the Lübeck, which the last video I made of was two years ago because this is a reward. Let's first have a look at the thumbnail. I think that this is amazing thumbnail. And let me know in the comment section what you think about my thumbnails. I really love to get some feedback on that. And uh, we're talking about the 375mm M50 Bofors anti-submarine rocket launchers. As you can see the flight time is there. We have a minimum arming distance of 700 meters. Below that the rockets just don't fuse and a maximum range of 2.8 kilometers. And that is the absolute death zone of anything that you come across. The firing angles are tricky as well and at closer ranges it's just from one side. 2.4, uh, 2 times 4 launches and we also have lots and lots of reloads. 88 reserve rockets and they have 107 kilograms of TNT. Before we go into the game, the funniest kill ever. This patrol boat launched the torpedoes so close that the torpedoes didn't arm, they went right through the ship. And because it's Easter, I thought to myself, well, why not lay some eggs? Two depth charges, first one goes up and second one kills. Funniest kill ever. And um, the reason why there is this classical War Thunder hangar music in the background is because sadly there is no sound on those recordings, but later on there will be. And this is what I'm talking about. This is a cruiser and it dies to that mighty, mighty HE. The heaviest battleship HE shell is the 13.5 inch shell on the HMS Marlborough that carries around 88 kilograms. Those rockets carry 107 kilograms of TNT each and they just absolutely obliterate anything that they hit and it's deeply deeply satisfying. The trick is to get into this position and when you look at the minimap how did I get there? I used basically the destroyer spawn the upper one and had a lot of luck that the people didn't really pay attention too much and I just could farm them left right and center the aiming is a bit difficult and it's a diff different aiming as with the Russian uh, patrol boats, the SKR-7 etc. But this one is just absolutely magnificent. HE in War Thunder has lots of problems that it is sometimes just not doing too much damage. And that is a big problem for this ship because the 100mm autoguns and the 40mm Bofors, they have only HE available. And that is a problem because, yeah, you have no sap. So even if a Moffat gives you broadside and you could shoot the rear Amorak, you're just not gonna pen it. But when you do hit those uh, cruisers, then you do a lot of damage. Now, that you could see, that was just the range that I did not have, so we need to get this guy closer. I'm also in the cap, which helps a lot with reloading. Now, one further thing is here that even if you miss the enemy ships and you hit very close by, the blast is so enormous that they almost flip, so they can't, you know, get the guns on you. And when you then have the range settled, you do so much damage. Sometimes when you hit the bridge, the blast doesn't go through to the magazine, it's too far away. But this is why we are here in the perfect position. This guy could kill me if it would not be a bot. And here I just can launch the rockets. He's slow, he's a predictable course. And let's just uh, hit him a little bit with the autoguns. We can see he's at 80, 88 and then he goes down quite drastically and again another cruiser so you could see in the intro that was just not the exception but the rule this guy also uh, makes the brave submarine moscow move and dives down and when you get into this position when you let rip with this ship you also can make quite the buck because it's an actual premium and it's a rank 4 premium for the German patrol boats. And again, let's have a look at this situation because this is uh, 
where I just come around the corner if we, if you observe the minimap and I need to make sure that every rocket hits and they do so he's very low I decide to finish him off with the main guns this is basically a reserve destroyer and so eventually you deal enough damage and uh, there you can see maybe the launchers at the front there are in certain base so you need to expose a lot of broadside in order to make at closer ranges at around below two kilometers uh, so that they can fire them at all but when they hit oh, that's just absolutely fascinating and absolutely a lovely experience currently this thing goes on the marketplace for a lot of money and it's not really worth it even though it's a fantastic patrol boat but it has a destroyer spawn so you really need to know naval forces inside and out you need to know what you're doing set up your secondaries so that they shoot at aircraft the proxy fuse on those 40 millimeters is also quite fantastic and again you need to work around the reload of your Bofors 375 millimeter anti-submarine rocket launchers it's hilarious and um yeah i basically was out of crew i was about to die and yet i made it out alive and those battles are fantastic and i couldn't get enough i had the recordings sitting around for a couple of days and weeks and i know that i actually should make now more videos about the event vehicles um I did it on the Russian uh, cruiser which is not bad but not worth the effort and um, I also should make the aiming guide um, where I'm only then focusing on gun firepower but <laughs> killing SKR 7s feeding them their own medicine because they have easier to use rockets um, but yeah feeding them their own uh, medicine is so great i'm so confident in my shots uh, of the radar assisted proximity fuse shells that i just let this guy die and uh, i'm not showing every kill here some of them are a bit gun based and take too long but yeah here you could see that even the secondaries kill by themselves so here um we cannot really deal with the US destroyers. They have those anti fragmentation um, plates on the side that absorb almost all the HE damage. So we have to focus on the bridge, on the turrets. Why the bridge? Because then the vehicle cannot change direction and you can then hopefully launch a torpedo or, you know, take your time to take the very well aimed shots. And that is also quite important. One disadvantage of those 100 millimeter guns is that after a while they overheat and then they also become quite inaccurate. But if you just pump enough HE into somebody, eventually they'll die. Now here is a little bit of a section of uh, anti-aircraft work because you also need the radar lead indicator according to your speed and uh, when you do this correctly <laughs> fantastic it's just absolutely a nightmare for any aircraft and as a support vehicle that there is just no limits to what this ship can do and i absolutely love it and here um i'm going faster than the enemy ship i overlead and again we can see how the impact tilt the ship just a little bit we take out the turrets, we take out the bridge, we wait for the reload and um, the problem is at this very moment I'm angled too far backwards so my launcher cannot actually uh, rotate around but again for some bizarre reason this thing blows up and there is another plane coming in and we just want to shoot them down. So. Do you like what you see here? Is this um, a good representation of the ship? Because some of you out there actually play ships. Yeah, all three of you. Let me know in the comment section 
uh, what you think about the style of my naval videos, the mixture of in-depth reviews or a little bit of a kill compilation um, like I do sometimes for uh, first impressions or in this case where it has a certain theme where I'm mostly focusing on the outstanding feature of this uh, ship uh, being the 375 millimeter uh, Bofors anti-submarine rockets. So um, there is one more scene that I really want to uh, point out here. There is a Cowell and I'm turning away from him. I cannot really engage him. I do not have enough crew. I need to get into the cap and so I turn away and hope for the best. Knock out again the turrets, knock out the bridge. Yes, I'm specifically aiming for those and when I then have to turn away and I see that he shoots me by turning away, I then deploy the smoke screen and uh, that will make it really difficult for that guy to aim at me and eventually if he's the only one with having a line of sight on me then it also breaks the gray box. Um, I'm now inside of the cap, I'm capping it and um, that is obviously where we then have, will finish off the USS Cowell. Um, back in the days the USS Cowell was an absolute monster and yeah we also capped this one three aircraft seven kills two caps and that is just also a fantastic result and while it's not Moffat gaming or Frank Knox gaming it also makes quite a nice bug so that's it for me today thanks for watching thanks for listening I hope you enjoyed this video why not give it a like if you did it's just a click for you for me it means the world subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other as usual on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder